Money, 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 money. Money makes the world go round, and there's lots of it. In 2013, there were 10 trillion U.S. dollars floating around the planet, and that's the U.S. alone. Include all the other currencies in the world, and it jumps to hundreds of trillions. But what is money, really? When you ask, most people define money by how they use it, and that is to get things. Thing is, you can use money for many things besides just getting things, and none of these gives you a definition. So the question still remains, what is money? To answer the question, let's imagine a simple economy where everybody works at something different. At the end of the day, we have the fruits of our labor, but we can't live by bread or fish alone. And so at the beginning of each new day, we trade. This is economic exchange, and it's critical for quality of life, even survival. But be careful here. It looks like products are being exchanged, but what's really being exchanged is labor time. If an artisan works eight hours to make bowls, a fisher has to give back eight hours of labor to make it fair. If the fisher catches 10 fish in eight hours, he gives the artisan 10 fish. But it's not really the fish that's being exchanged, it's labor. If a baker was the one who was buying, the artisan would get eight hours worth of bread instead of fish. Eight hours of the artisan's labor equals eight hours of the fisher's time or the baker's time. Exchanging labor in the form of products is called barter, and it's great, but very limiting. For it to work, each participant in the exchange has to want what the other offers. Otherwise, the market grinds to a stop. But enter money. Money was invented to make it easier to exchange labor time by putting labor into abstract form. Money is great because money makes exchange simple and easy. With money, you can trade with anybody, anywhere, anytime, and that's important because with money, we have transformed our small world of local exchange into a giant world of global exchange. With money, we can have bigger, better, and more of everything. Without money, the world we live in today would simply not be possible. But as great as money is, there is one major problem with it, and that's how easy it is to accumulate. Remember, a product equals somebody's labor time. If we buy handicrafts from a street vendor and put these in our homes, we are accumulating labor in the form of handicrafts, which is fine because there are limits on how much we can accumulate in this fashion. However, with money, there are no limits. When money is the medium, you can accumulate trillions of labor hours with no trouble at all. And that's a problem because when people start to accumulate, they find it's never enough. The reason why is because money is power. You can buy products with money, but with money, you can also buy other people's labor. In fact, with money, you can make others do just about anything you want. And that makes you a very powerful person. And power is the most addictive drug on the planet. And once you're hooked, it's never enough. The more you have, the more you want. And that's a problem. Because while you can easily overdose on heroin or whatever, you can't ever OD on money. And while you might think addiction to money is not a bad thing, oh, <laughs> my friend, it is. It is a problem for the addicts and their families because the addiction is all consuming. It's also a problem for the entire world because the addict will do anything to feed their need. They will lower wages of workers, replace jobs with machines, exploit vulnerable people, and even use child labor if they can get away with it. And it doesn't stop when we have enough. If we don't wanna buy, they will manipulate us into wanting more. They won't care if their practices and products make us sick, and they won't think twice about the environmental cost because the addiction overrides it all. And while you think it would all stop when there was no more money left, it doesn't. 
In order to keep the system going, they lend us money just so they can take it away. But that just makes it worse, because instead of ending up with nothing, we end up with less than nothing. We end up with debt. And the debt accumulates until eventually it's so bad that nobody is willing to lend at all. And when that happens, the world as we know it ends. With no money, there's no exchange. With no exchange, the economy collapses. With no economy, it all goes to pieces. It's happened before, and it will happen again. It's really just a matter of time. Even as we speak, the 62 richest people on the planet have more money than three billion people combined. And it's getting worse fast. It simply can't go on for much longer. Now, I know the picture I've painted isn't pretty, but there are those who see it coming. It's clear from the growing violence of world events and the growing chaos of global weather that we're reaching the final stage. If we want to save the planet, we need to act now. The question is, what do we do? Well, there are a few things we can do. First, we must educate. If we're going to solve global problems, everybody needs to know the truth. Of course, some people aren't going to like this. Some might prefer us to remain confused and distracted, but we can't let that stop us. We must all take apart and educate. The second thing we can consider is a global debt jubilee. A debt jubilee is when debt is simply written off the books. I know it sounds outrageous, but more and more people are discussing the possibility. And besides, there's no way our 300 trillion global debt can ever be paid off. Third, since accumulation is the root of the problem, we need to end accumulation or manage it in some sensible way. How that's done is something that people can decide, but we have to do something. And finally, we need a spiritual revolution. Not the kind where we follow the leader, but the kind where we awaken to reality and empower to change. You know what I'm talking about. The kind where we throw off greed and hatred and unite as one for change. You know what I mean? The kind where peace guides the planet and love steers the stars. It's either that or 